Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday evening to you all. I hope you guys are doing well out there tonight and certainly had yourselves a great day. And I hope you are having a great weekend out there so far. Thank you all for tuning in this evening. I think you'll find this video very helpful, very interesting as we're going to speak on many things and we're going to, you know, take a look at what could happen over the next even 10 to 15 days. So, you know, guys, I don't like to speak on too far out just because things change so much. That's one of the things I've tweaked with this channel throughout the last couple years. I used to speak on the long range a little bit too much. Now I let things kind of ooze into the medium range before I really start to talk about a lot if it's going to be a high impact system. But since we have Thanksgiving week coming up here in a couple weeks, I do want to start to take a peek on some of the things, some things I'm seeing. And I'm going to take, I guess, uh, a shot at what I think could potentially happen Thanksgiving week. You know, I don't come on here just to show you model guidance and head on out. I like to give you my take on some things too. So I'll do that. But kind of in the short term, what's right in front of us is this weekend. We got very beneficial rains falling across areas of the southeast. But I am watching a more high impact, low pressure. And I, I say impact, but actually, you know, it's going to bring a lot of beneficial rains. And what I'm saying is, I think we need to watch the western Gulf of Mexico. I think a stronger low pressure will move in early next week, bring inches of rain, not just like these small amounts that we've been been seeing over the last day into this weekend that we're likely going to see. So we'll speak on that. I think that'll be good news for a lot of folks who tune in from the south. And then we'll speak on, you know, what could happen just next week in between both of those time frames I've just watched. There could be some storm systems we need to watch. So with that being said, if you folks have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like. And if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below. Let's get rolling here. So we got rains falling across Mississippi, Louisiana, the Deep South. Some of these areas that are showing a lot of rains, there's not as much rain as what the radar is showing. Uh, we know that um, this um, site does that sometimes. There's a lot of radars that do that. We call it Virga, especially like some of this moisture up here in the Northeast. I can almost guarantee you some, some of this is not actually hitting the ground. But anyways... It's the general thing we're going to see out throughout the weekend. Just waves of light to moderate rain that kind of kind of oozes out the western Gulf of Mexico, continues to affect the coastal regions of Texas, Louisiana, the deep south, throughout the weekend into the southeast. We got a system that is entering the Pacific Northwest. We spoke on that a lot this morning. This is going to bring a lot of heavy snow for those higher terrains of the Cascades, uh, the Olympic Mountains, places like that. We won't speak a whole lot on that system, uh, but... We are going to speak on right in front of us these rains across the southeast this weekend into early next week. So let's go on and talk about that. So we'll start off this evening. HRR model doing all right. Um, but as we're getting into the overnight hours, I think we'll have an area more organized, light, or at times moderate rain. It really gets going and takes over areas of Alabama into Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia is definitely going to get some uh, rain to, uh, overnight tonight if you haven't seen much already today. I think I, I think, and I, I can't speak. And I think as we're waking up into tomorrow morning, we're going to have a lot of widespread light to a time some moderate rain falling across Georgia, South Carolina, even in the southeast North Carolina. Unfortunately, we, we need more rain up here in the southern apps, like western North Carolina, eastern Tennessee, upstate South Carolina. I just don't think this round, these rounds throughout the weekend are going to add up to much for you folks. But the good news is we are getting rains, waking up to some scattered, even some downpours potentially. Um, for Alabama, Mississippi, but you see all this moisture that continues to just kind of churn here in the western Gulf, in the western Gulf of Mexico. That's something we need to watch. But we continue to keep this going. We're getting to tomorrow afternoon. If you got any outdoor activities in South Carolina, Georgia, especially South Carolina, I know there's a game. Uh, I'm probably going to a football game tomorrow here in Columbia, South Carolina. It's only supposed to get into the 50s. Going to be light to moderate rain throughout the entire game. Not sure if I'm going to go. I'm probably going to end up catching a cold. But anyways, you got outdoor activities across the deep south, the southeast. Chances are you're going to be dodging some raindrops out there, okay? So we get into tomorrow evening. There's kind of a lull. There's kind of a break, right? There's not a whole lot going on. But as we are getting into Sunday morning, the rain begins to develop pretty much in the same areas where it left off. Georgia, South Carolina. Look at eastern North Carolina getting into this rain, though, now. Okay, very scattered about. Which just takes us all the way to about lunchtime Sunday. And you get, you're get you starting to see a break, a clearing in the deep south. But this is when we really need to start to watch this moisture down here. So rainfall just between now and Monday morning, guys. I mean, this is the blend of all models. Uh, likely, and I'm going to show Texas here in a second too. But not going to add up much more 
Uh, for Louisiana, Mississippi, maybe another quarter to a half inch of rain, but we'll take it, right? Uh, Mobile, Gulfport could get a little bit more. And then I think the rain really starts to add up in Alabama and Georgia um, overnight tonight into the rest of the weekend. You know, south of Birmingham could get an inch of rain, Montgomery an inch of rain, getting into Columbus, Georgia, just south of Atlanta, heart of Georgia, inch, inch and a quarter is very possible. And then we start to look into the Carolinas and the rest of Georgia, you know, could get but from central Georgia to central South Carolina, even into the Piedmont, North Carolina, could get anywhere from a tenth of an inch of rain. Somebody could sneak out an inch of rain. Okay, this rain has a chance. The short range models have been trending more wet for South Carolina for tomorrow, especially. So definitely could get some beneficial rains throughout the weekend. But, you know, not really a huge soaking, I don't think. But it will be a persistent um, light to at times, like I said, moderate rain, kind of an, one of those annoying rains that it doesn't quite know what it wants to do. Some areas just might see a light rain or just a misty kind of conditions. And I say annoying, but like I said, I think a lot of people will, will loves to see the rain in this case. So moving past the weekend, I'm going to just, I'm going to show you the GFS and the European. We're going to start off Monday morning. What I want you to watch is this big, big plume of moisture. Now this does show portions of Texas. Monday morning, we're starting off with a lot of heavy rain from Houston all the way down to Corpus Christi to um, South Texas. A lot of heavy rain. And this continues to start to get into Monday about midday. Look at this area of very heavy rain. Okay, this is going to be some pretty heavy rain moving into southern Louisiana. We're starting to get into uh, Monday evening. Rain. I mean, I'm talking about heavy rain too. Some real tropical rains. Look at this low pressure developing. This looks like an El Nino setup to me. It really does. Now, models have been showing this low pressure for a while, but it has trended north. And I kind of spoke on that uh, the last uh, kind of several days back where I kind of thought that some of this energy that was kind of shunted down to the Gulf of Mexico had an opportunity to really trend north. And sure enough, this low pressure for early next week looks to do that. So we're getting a break in the southeast. But as we're getting into Monday, Monday evening, kind of Monday overnight, Look at this huge area of moisture beginning to move in. And then we start to get into overnight, Monday into Tuesday morning. And by the time we get into Tuesday morning, guys, we get, this is just a nice soaking rain, I'm thinking, that's that's really overspreading central southern Mississippi, central southern Alabama, rain moving into southwest Georgia, still raining all the way back in eastern Tennessee, Louisiana, southern Arkansas, really coming down in these areas that have a D4 drought, an exceptional drought, Okay. And this is moving. This is getting to Tuesday midday. This is getting to Tuesday evening. Heavy rains literally targeting these drought-stricken areas. Relief is coming, guys. It really is. And then we start to get into Wednesday morning. And this is trended north all the way up into Tennessee. Look at this Gulf moisture right here. Heavy rains. Wednesday morning. And then this is when... This really starts to get into the Carolinas, take over Georgia. Look at these rains even in Florida. There's areas of Florida that need to rain too, especially in and around the Tampa Bay region. But we're getting into Wednesday evening. We got rains overspreading a lot of the southeast. And then we watch to see if this low pressure tries to redevelop off the coast of the southeast. And then we have to watch to see if it merges with some energy to the north, which we'll speak on here in a second. We're getting into Thursday of next week, six days from now could bring some rains into into the Carolinas. Okay, same thing with the Euro. We'll go through this a little bit faster. We're getting to Monday, a lot of rain. Tuesday morning, rain moving across all the deep south states, the Gulf states. Getting into Wednesday morning, look at this rain overspreading Alabama, Georgia, getting into South Carolina, Florida. Could have some storms down in Florida. Need to watch how far north this low pressure gets. Then getting into Thursday, rain starting to move into South Carolina, Western North Carolina, and these places. We need this to move a little bit further north to get more areas of Virginia, the Southern Apps into this. But yeah, guys, so this will be a big rainmaker, I think. So like I said, this is Texas between now and Monday morning. But this is Texas between now and like midway next week. Okay, even more rain's going to add up. A rainy period continues for the coastal and just southeastern sections and southern sections of Texas. I mean, all the coastal regions of Texas and an hour or two inland, anywhere from two to five inches of rain between now and midway next week. But this is when your eyes are going to light up if you really are hoping for rain, which I imagine most of us are. This is just between now and Monday morning. I've already showed you this. But this is between now and the end of next work week. So this is basically between now and this time next week. Between now 
I've been said that eight times or so. And this time next week, the next seven days, look at this. Multiple inches of rain, guys. Anywhere from three to five inches of rain. It's looking likely, possible, I would say possible to likely, across Louisiana, the southern half of Mississippi and Alabama, even into Georgia. And, guys, you know, you start to get into Georgia, too. I mean, look at this. All right. A lot of rain. Okay. Even rain into Florida. All right. And, you know, to, to go down to show our folks in Florida some love, and I feel like I've been leaving you guys hanging a little bit. Unfortunately, it really does jip you guys around the Tampa Bay area that really needs the rain. But let's hope that this gets better. This fills in a little bit more. Okay. And then we go a little bit up the block here in the Southern Apps region. And yeah, I mean, the, the rainfall chances are increasing. We need this to continue to move further north and northeast into the Virginia. We need more rain up into Virginia. But the Deep South is about to get a big dent knocked into its drought. Okay, that is the good news with this. Now, looking forward into the rest of next week, guys. Okay, that's that low pressure we just discussed. Out west, you're watching a couple things. You're watching the storm system is going to move in. But remember how I was talking about we could get like an atmospheric river set up for the western U.S.? Well, models are really backed off that. I do think we can get some moisture into California, the southwest. I really do. But they've really backed off on what was thinking. We were starting to think that we were going to get um, just, a, just a funnel of moisture to really just kind of went right into California. That might not be the case now, but that could switch. Still got time. But we start to get into late next week, right? Low pressure kind of shoots across the northern areas of, of the lower 48. This could bring rain for the Great Lakes, snow for maybe portions of the Great Lakes region, the upper Midwest. We'll watch this. Please ignore this. I just don't, I'm not betting on this happening. The GFS is just adamant on something kind of tropical system developing the Gulf of Mexico, not the Gulf of Mexico, the Caribbean. If it happens, I'll say, hey, you know, great job, GFS, but I, I'm just not betting on it happening. The, the GFS is different than the euro with this, okay? The GFS does not connect any energy with this energy. The European does, okay? But we get into next weekend, and then um, we'll, we'll, we'll stop it at this point, okay? What you got here is the potential for a messy weekend next weekend. But energy is everywhere, Okay? Now, what I'm about to show you, you know, you're immediately going to get excited if you're living in areas of the country. But please, please remember, guys, do not, and, and it took me a while to learn this. It did. Um, but do not look at anything that I'm about to show you as some kind of conclusion. These models are crazy. Careful what you believe. And, yeah, I'll stop rambling there. So what happens with the GFS is we get into next weekend, an area of cold air comes down, Okay. You start to get a little bit of snow showing up in areas of the Ohio Valley. Not sure if that's going to happen. Big time low pressure to uh, kind of really gets going right over the northeast uh, at the end of next weekend. Okay, this could bring some high impact weather to areas of the northeast. We'll see what happens. And look, that's 222 hours out on the November 19th into the 20th. Okay, that could bring some, who knows, just some rain, some snow. We'll just leave it at that. Then as we get past this, and you know, I'm going to show you this. We get into Thanksgiving week. We're starting to get into Monday. We see some moisture, and you see these uh, blue dotted lines going down here. Just think of that as cold air dropping down. Cold air is dropping down to some moisture, and we get what you call an anafront. So basically, it's a cold front, sharp digging cold front that digs down with moisture that shoots out ahead of it, and you have a cold chasing moisture event. So, you know, for um, early for 270 hours out from now, it shows uh, a snow event all the way down into Alabama. So this we see this every every cold season, and we're starting to get deeper into November at this point. This is not uncommon at all. If something like this was to happen, it would be. But to see it on model guidance this far out, it's not. Um, what we see fantasy runs all the time, but this is interesting to watch. Okay, we'll, we'll see if anything trends, but there is... I'm not saying that the pattern coming up supports this, but a cooler pattern could be supported for Thanksgiving week in the east, and I'll show you that here in a second. But you know, the GFS, this is what we call a fantasy run, brings a huge shot of cold air down to the eastern U.S. and you know, rain changing the snow, big time system, and then it drops the the hammer in the long range. I mean, getting all the way 
366 hours out shows a massive winter storm across the middle of the country. Just starts to show some some wild stuff. It really does. So um, the reason I'm showing you this is because typically the GFS will show some crazy stuff, and it's and it's the GFS's way of telling us that we could be entering a more active pattern. That's the only thing you should take out of stuff like that. We could be entering a more active pattern. Now you look at the GF, I mean the European that only goes 10 days out, 240 hours out. Um, it does something a little bit more different with the storm system into next weekend. Okay, it shows a lot more activity early in the weekend with a shot of cold air that's only digging down to the Great Lakes and to the Northeast. Shows a messy weekend next weekend for the Northeast. Clears out. Cold air kind of comes in behind it, but it doesn't link up with the moisture. And then we get into the tail end of next weekend. We have a storm system that the GFS really doesn't show at this time frame. Storm system that gets going. Guys, this is 216 hours out. Storm system gets going and then begins to eject a low pressure across the middle of the country with cold air behind it. But this, to me, with a low pressure cutting across, screams severe weather to me. So, you know, the GFS more so getting into the, the kind of the, the beginning portion of Thanksgiving week wants to bring like a severe weather threat for the Deep South. Like this is Monday, um, November 20th. Look at this huge little stout, a huge little stout. That doesn't make any sense. But this is... Your classic looking warm sector. You got low pressure up here. This is bringing a lot of warm moist air out the Gulf of Mexico. And even though this is 240 hours out, to me, this screams severe weather based off this run of the European. So, yeah, guys, it's, it's going to be interesting times. And like I said, the western U.S. is, you know, that, that scenario where we thought it was about to get very active, kind of mellowed out. But I do want to watch a storm system next week that's off the coast of the western U.S., will it move into California, create a lot of moisture? But I do think we could get some moisture into some of the bigger cities cities along the west coast, California, like San Diego, down to Los Angeles, San Francisco. I do think we can get some rain into uh, late next week. I do, even into like Arizona, okay? I need to watch this, and then we'll watch maybe a powerful storm system that could move into the Pacific Northwest sometime next weekend. So, this is this is going to show ridging. It's going to show troughing. Okay, ridging is going to be in the orange. Troughing is going to be in the blue. Ridging typically indicates above average temperatures. A pattern that does not support um, a stormy st stormy weather. Okay, um, or or cold weather. Blue indicates lower pressure, which indicates some kind of storm system, cooler air, some kind of trough. Okay. Um, and as we're getting into next weekend, you see some kind of upper trough or cutoff low down here in the south, okay? And then it develops into a full-fledged upper trough. And this is the latest GFS ensemble, which is a reliable thing to look at in the medium to long range. So this is what we call a positive PNA. We got ridging in the west, troughing in the east. And this is getting right into Thanksgiving week. So to me... 240 hours out, this tells me the long-range ensemble guidance is saying that we're going to have a pattern flip that's going to support storminess in the east, cooler air in the east, warmer air in the west. And this sticks around through, you know, a good portion of the week before maybe going zonal or something around Thanksgiving. But is this going to happen? I don't know. We, we don't know. But if you look at the European ensemble also, it shows kind of the same thing, right? See the big area in blue, but it's much different. You have ridging up in Canada with this. Don't have an all-out trough, kind of some kind of energy down here. It's just saying, hey, some energy could be down here, okay? But, but you know, it does not have a big ridge out west. In fact, it has a developing trough out west, so it's different, okay? What we do know between now and then is the country is going to bake. I mean, not literally, but... We are well above temperature, well above average temperature wise between the 16th and the 20th of November. Okay, and even getting through pretty much Thanksgiving, showing above average temperatures into the east. So the Climate Prediction Center, the National Weather Service, is not biting on this yet. But guys, that's about all I got. The thing that I'm the most confident on 
is we're going to get rain next week in the deep south. But if you're wondering what my idea for Thanksgiving week is, I think we're going to have some sort of, I'm not going to say high impact storm system, but some type of bigger storm system that's going to create issues for traveling. Is it going to be a severe weather event sometime Thanksgiving week? Is it going to be a winter storm, big time rainstorm, big time windstorm? We're not sure. But I would bet we're going to have some type of big storm system Thanksgiving week. That's my take now. Looking forward to see how this unfolds. That's all I got. Thank you all for tuning in. God bless all y'all and have a great start to your weekend.